So um, we have some people here who we haven't um, heard from or met yet yesterday. So I think if we have a short round of uh, maybe very, very quick 10 seconds um, um, presentation of yourself, like your names, where you're from, and maybe a line on what you're interested in, that would be great. Um, I don't know how we can do this. I could pick people from what appears first in my screen, but maybe we could. Okay, so the first one here in my screen is uh, Wilson Silva. Hi. Hi, Wilson. Hi. And I say uh, where you're from and what you're interested in to everyone. Yes. Uh, well, I'm. I'm professor at the uh, University of São Paulo, and now I moved to Guarapuava, the city mm -hmm. uh, that I present yesterday. Mm -hmm. And there we we uh, are building one core facility for single cell genomic analysis. Now we have uh, the basic infrastructure to to do that, and. Uh, we start to train people to 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 analyze the the data from single cell, and um, it's a, a big challenge for me because it's uh, everything that is new, but we have the support for the 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 government from Paraná to to maybe they they will launch. Uh, some grants for 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 different projects, especially now for for single cell genomic, genomics. And um, it, we have uh, we just uh, created one uh, genomic network with uh, um, thirteen institutions from the Paraná State. And uh, we are using the expertise from the, the research from the network to, to push some, some research in single cell genomics. And we are uh, very excited to, to, to provide that, uh, that uh, platform, scientific platform to help HCA Latin America to conduct some project. Maybe we can already take note of this as a, as a strength because we have then a new institute in the south of Brazil, which is equipped. And you have a network with 13 institutions who would be willing to uh, get together to discuss projects. And you might have a grant for single cell analysis also uh, yeah. platform. So I think there's a, a can be called a uh, strength that we have here, right? I don't know what Christine thinks, but I think this, uh, this looks like a, a powerful something for us to start with. Okay. Great yeah, 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 that's, that's really great. Um, cool, uh, next here in my screen is Dr. En Enrique Hernandez. Yes, hello everyone. Uh, I'm Enrique Hernandez Lemus. I'm a principal investigator and a program coordinator at the National Institute of Genomic Medicine in Mexico. It's one of Mexico's NIHs uh, dedicated to genomics and, and its impact in, in, in healthcare. And I, I also run a lab, and my lab is, is, uh, has been focused for, for some time on trying to, to dissect. Uh, gene regulation patterns at the global scale networks uh, in, in cancer, particularly breast cancer. And in, in the recent time, we, we have been interested in, in the role that the different infiltrates of uh, immune cells within the tumors are playing in the overall evolution. So we are interested in studying multicellular gene regulatory networks in breast cancer. Uh, thank you so much. And your institute is also interested in uh, starting to work with single cell analysis? Yes. Uh, we, we have been uh, using 10x for some time, and, and we are interested in uh, um, using it to 
start uh, not only developing uh, the computational and analytical skills, which is uh, more on, on my side of the, of the work, but also on, on perhaps establishing uh, dedicated facilities for, for single cell. I think we can also uh, put that as a strength. That's Mexico also coming up with a, a already technology installed, mm -hmm. just like Wilson was saying, and computational analysis uh, team that could also help. I think that's great. Great. Thank you very much, Dr. Oh, Enrique. Pleasure. Okay. Uh, next in my screen is Daniela, Daniela Robles. Hi, everyone. Uh, so yes, I'm, I'm Daniela Robles. I'm a, I'm a group leader at the National Autonomous University of Mexico, also called UNAM in its Juriquilla campus in Querétaro. And uh, I have never worked with single cell data, uh, but I would like to start using it. We've been thinking about starting for, for some time and we have already been talking to uh, the Mexican distributors of 10X, for example, genomics to, to start, but then the pandemic came because we did start talking about this at the beginning of the year. Um, we study at the moment uh, a rare type of cancer a called uh, acrylantigenous melanoma. Uh, it's not been studied uh, deeply because it's considered a rare uh, type of melanoma in other parts of the world, but here in Mexico is the most common, uh, as well as in other countries uh, in Latin America, Africa, and Asia. So we have now a collaboration with the uh, National Cancer Institute of Mexico uh, to collect uh, hundreds of, of samples from these patients and do uh, genomics, transcriptomics, uh, PDX models uh, for this type of cancer and try to, um, yeah, try to identify therapeutic targets, drivers, uh, and uh, all these analysis that we can do. Uh, but we have not started with single cell data. So uh, I'm very excited to see if there's any way in which we can start collaborating. Also uh, studying uh, an AFLD and NASH, there were some talks yesterday about that. So we're also starting uh, uh, studies on that. That's, <laughs> that's great. You have the cohorts, right? You have the patients then that we do. Work. Yeah. So we already have a collaborator for you here who is uh, Enrique Hernandez, who's also over there and he has the machine, you have the cohorts. <laughs> so I think that's already great. Uh, that is true. That is one possibility. Very good. Ha the, the, having the patients and the, and the scientific question is also a, a very important strength. So I think that Biological samples can also be considered a uh, strength here in the group. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> uh, next in my screen is uh, Christine Wells. She's our uh, co-chair here in this, uh, in this session. Christine, do you say, so Christine has a lot of experience with the HCA group, so I think she can um, tell us a little bit about that. I'm Christine. I'm a stem cell biologist and a genome biologist in Melbourne, Australia. Um, I think uh, most of the experience I've had in consortia have been um, with consortia such as Phantom, actually, which Jay Shin is also uh, very familiar with. And the great thing about consortia like Human Cell Atlas and Phantom, I think, is not just the capacity to participate in global science, but also the, the networks of scientists that you expose your trainees to, your PhD students, and uh, the capabilities that you can do as a group um, are much greater than the capabilities you could do on your own. So it's a really exciting time to, to do science and to be able to um, build on the networks locally as well. I'm very interested to hear uh, what Latin America will do, um, how your individual countries will support you and how we in the rest of the world can support you as well. Thank you so much, Christine. Thank you. Uh, next here is uh, Jay. Jay, do you want to tell them a little bit about what you're doing there uh, within the H HCA uh, context? Yeah. Um, hello, everyone. I'm Jay Shin, and I'm currently in Riken, Japan, uh, Yokohama. Um, I am, I've been in HCA since the inception, so since 2016, um, so I've mm -hmm. kind of uh, understand the complexity of it all, but at the same time, trying to simplify it here in Asia to, to motivate and kind of bring people and build communities here. 
Um, so one of the things that I focus on is single cell RNA sequencing, fo uh, looking at gene regulation. And that's why I joined this breakout session and I study a lot of stem cells, cell, cell reprogramming mainly and cell fate determinations. Um, so trying to manipulate gene regulation um, in order to induce cell reprogramming using single cell technologies. Um, so with that, uh, we do use 10x genomics quite a bit, but we also have access to other single cell platforms such as ICEL8, which is a micro well based. We also have the Fluidine, uh, which we don't use anymore. <laughs> we have other custom custom compatible droplet systems called Nadia. And you know that's I'd be happy to share with you what are the advantages and disadvantages of different platforms. Uh, but 10X is somewhat of a useful tool because um, many other labs are using it. So it's becoming a lot easier to integrate and standardize. So it's becoming like the Illumina of single cell technology and that's not always a good thing either, but nevertheless, um, we do 10X genomics. One thing that I would also vouch for is to consider multiplexing samples and I'd be happy to discuss more about how to do this because that will significantly reduce the cost of your operation. So uh, at yesterday I talked about this uh, AIDA project and we multiplex uh, PBMCs from 16 different individuals to a single run. So that costs, that reduces the cost to one, one sixteenth. So um, I think that is going to be quite powerful and useful for a uh, place where funding can be limited. Um, so the starting cost is high, but if you calculate the cost per cell and per, per sample, it can be quite cost effective. So that uh, I'll stop there, but um, I'd be happy to kind of share some of these experiences and help the, in a way to be more efficient. Thanks. Um, could we agree that this can also be considered a strength in the sense of having common interest with the Asian HCA in reducing costs and having protocols that have already been uh, um, uh, established and validated, right? I think that, Absolutely. Yeah, um, yeah. So we have um, protocols that we share, um, protocols that I owe. Um, we'll be happy to send you guys the link, um, how to multiplex, how much you should load, how to demultiplex and things like that. So mm -hmm. I'd be happy to share that. Okay, Jay, that's, that's really great. I think for groups which are just starting to work uh, with the platforms, that's really important because usually we have only the uh, very, um, uh, I don't know, um, code protocols from the companies, right? And optimization is something that takes a long time. So I think that would be very helpful. And uh, I don't know if ever, anyone has a comment on that. Maybe uh, we saw that uh, Dr. Enhiki is already using this platform too. So uh, maybe he would be interested in directly talking to uh, about optimization. It's good. Okay, great. So here next to my screen, I have uh, Ignacio, Ignacio, uh, what's the, um, yes, a little bit complicated last name. Okay, so. Hi everyone, my name is Ignacio Wichmann and I'm a PhD in medical sciences here in Chile. I work at the Pontificia Universidad Católica de Chile and I just finished my PhD about a month ago. So um, my PhD, my doctoral thesis was based on the transcriptomic changes and changes in stem cell biology and, and reprogramming of gastric, of gastric stem cells into gastric cancer cells. So I was looking for transcription factors that could regulate the expression of long long coding RNAs in this process and how this, these changes could actually affect the, the balance of long long coding RNAs and messenger RNAs that share microRNA binding. So I only did this from bulk RNA-seq and bulk microarray data, only pu public databases. And we got some really interesting results. And one of the questions that Vinicius actually asked me because he was in my thesis committee, what would I think about uh, doing single cell RNA-seq for the 
these transformations and reprogramming of gastric stem cells into cancer cells. And I don't have any experience or funding, but I think that for people with, uh, studying cancer, single cell analysis would be really interesting to see how these cells reprogram and where the origin of cancer lies, if it's within resident stem cells or, or other cells that become stem-like in the process of, of cancer trait acquisition. Um, now I'm, I'm applying to a, PA, to a postdoctoral grant where I'm going to study also the response of uh, T cells and exhausted T cells um, to new antigens. So that would also be a really interesting field to apply single cell transcriptomics on. Mm -hmm. That's great. I think we have a lot of people here with interest in stem cell and cancer. Uh, so I think that's, uh, that's very, very nice to know. And do you have over there also cohorts? Uh, you, you, were, uh, you work with data analysis, right? Yep. Okay. Um, That's most they're just public data sets and they have mm -hmm. some cooperations with Vinicius Group at Universidad de Chile and also with Elmer Fernandez in Córdoba, Argentina. Okay, okay. Also, oh, you're already working with Vinicius. Okay, I was gonna just uh, say that. Okay, well, that's great. You already have a little hub there of people, of uh, groups that are interested in um, uh, single cell analysis. Yeah. And Carolina Visama, who's also here. She's, she's going to talk afterwards, but. Ah, okay, okay, okay. I think that's also a, a, an interesting strength that we have a group already formed in Chile that is already actively working with the analysis of data sets. I think that looks a bit like us here, right, Wilson, because we have a group of people already working with data analysis. We haven't really generated our uh, sets yet, but uh, this is moving forward fast, I think, at the, the understanding um, data analysis. Okay, great, great, Inesia. So yeah, next to coming up is Carolina Bizama. I think you are colleagues, right? Hello, everyone. Uh, first of all, uh, congratulations for the initiative and invitation for this workshop. <laughs> uh, I am researcher, uh, I am a doctor of science, and, and I am actually working uh, as an assist assistant professor of the uh, Department of pa uh, Pathology in Pontificia Universidad Católica de Chile uh, in a School of Medicine. Uh, the School of Medicine actually uh, had a biobank bio of tissue and blood fluids uh, and, 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 I, and I actually, uh, I am a principal researcher of a fundacid a project of the government of Chile uh, focus on the use of organoid platform uh, as a model of uh, tumor biology in gastrointestinal cancers and has a platform uh, to predict the response of uh, chemotherapy and immunotherapy in uh, gastrointestinal cancer. And I, uh, I have not experience in single cells uh, analysis, but I would like so much uh, can be ca characterized my organoid, uh, in a specific the plasticity of the stem cell inside of the organoid. Uh, um, uh, I would like so much contribute and collaborate with the samples, the organoid sample or teach you samples that are necessary to complete the research. Thank you, Carolina, that's great. So can we also add this to our strengths that um, they are working with organites, they also have a biobank and they have, be, they have this very streamlined, I think this is great. And there is also this uh, connection with the HCA organoid um, uh, working group. Mm -hmm. They have a lot of information on that. So I think that is a, um, an interface that we can also explore and consider it a strength. Plus the biobank, because that's really great. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Thank next you year, Yeah, we'll talk more later. Uh, everyone, keep in mind what we are discussing. And afterwards, we're going to come back to this to see what challenges are for us to be working together with these groups and uh, how we could get research funding and 
maybe some uh, small hubs within this breakout session that could already start discussing some collaboration. So uh, take notes of what you're listening and afterwards we are going to come back to this. Next here, my, thank you so much, Carolina. Uh, here next to my screen is Marileni Lopez. Hi. Hi. Hi, everyone. So first of all, I'd like to thank the organization for this opportunity to share with you and discuss with you about a little bit about our work. So um, I'm associate professor of Institute of Biomedical Sciences, University of Sao Paulo. And I'm very interested in understand the biology of stem cells in different contexts. In glioblastome stem cells and also pluripotent stem cells, we have potential candidate to modulate both biology, I mean biology of stem cells and also glioblastome stem cells. So we work with uh, PDX and also um, patient samples. We have a collaboration with a Sika Marble Cancer Center in Sao Paulo. So we work with uh, uh, patient-derived xenografts and, and also uh, patient samples. We have this uh, specific protein is a cell membrane protein, and we know that this protein is uh, different levels of this protein expressed in the, the, the glioblastoma cells. So we have this heterogeneous, uh, heterogeneous expression of this protein in, in glioblastoma. So both approaches, I mean, glioblastoma stem cells and also pluripotent stem cells are very heterogeneous. That's why I'm very interested in implementing my laboratory, the single cell analysis um, to understand a little bit more about the contribution of our potential candidates and the biology of the cells. Uh, that's great. Uh, I think we already have a, a clear uh, common interest with Wilson, who is also uh, working with glioblastoma. I don't know if you're familiar with that. Mm -hmm. And he has a great center for single cell analysis, right? That he was just describing. So mm -hmm. I think that uh, that can be also noted. Um, Thank you. Next, we have here uh, another uh, USP colleague, right? Uh, João Paulo Fabi is in my uh, screen here. Hello, everyone. My name is João Paulo Fabi, but you can call me JP. I think it's better and, and it's easier. So I work with, uh, I work at the University of Sao Paulo. I am an assistant professor and I work in the uh, nutrition and food department. So I am interested and I'm working with the dietary fiber and the fermentation and the, um, the results of the short chain fat acids in the biogenesis of colon cancer and the inhibition of colon cancer. And I work with also with organoids, so with uh, colon organoids. And uh, of course, I don't have uh, an experience with a uh, single cell RNA I am a colleague of uh, Elder Nakaya, so uh, he said that, of course, he could, we could join uh, some forces to try to, to, to make some founding. So that's the reason that I am here. Thank you so much. Jean-Paul, I remember you from some of the initiatives from yeah. last year, right? Yeah. And you're interested in that. And I think this is like building on that discussion from uh, last year. So yes, we think that we are gonna come up. Yeah, definitely. And, and I am a part of a CPG from FAPES, from FAPES <laughs> that it's called FORC, that it's Food mm -hmm. Research Center. So mm -hmm. we are trying to, to join all the force we, we could do it for it. Mm -hmm. Thanks mm -hmm. everyone. Thank JP, you. I think it's a, it's a really great strength if you can bring different modalities to the analysis um, of single cells. So transcriptomics or uh, DNA is, is one modality, but being able to look at uh, metabolomics across particularly in situ sections would be hugely interesting as well. Yeah, we have and a facility for, for metabolomics and proteomics, but uh, yeah. we don't have the transcriptome one. And uh, I am the only one that is working with RNA-seq in my, in my group. So I was trying to, 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 to see um how we could do it uh, starting from organoids and um afterwards uh, trying to to get some patients but i don't have the cohort uh, pa patricia know that but uh, of course we could join uh, something and someone from biobanks too mm -hmm. 
Yeah, they have, uh, you have the hypothesis, right? I remember you had uh, yeah, hypothesis yeah. and he needs the samples, but yeah, they yeah, are, yeah. yeah, that's, that's great. Great, great. Yeah. Thank you. Um, okay. So I, I don't know if everybody uh, saw in the chat that Jay Shin uh, shared with us a link with protocols. That's great. Thank you very much, Jay. Uh, next in my screen is Mariana Boroni. Uh, hi, hi, N nice to see you again today. Hi, Patricia. Hi, everyone. So, I am Mariana Boroni. You can also call me Mari <laughs> if it's easier. Um, I am the group leader of the Bioinformatics Lab, the Brazilian National Cancer Institute. I am also one of the CCI grantees. Um, I am really uh, interested in study um, the tumor microenvironment. We are very like, yeah, interested in the plasticity of some cells in this microenvironment, especially the myeloid derived ones. Um, regarding the resources we can offer uh, here in the Institute, we have a sequencing uh, facility. We also have a computational platform that can be um, available. Um, we are trying to acquire a um, single cell um, RNA seq um, platform. And we also have a tumor biobank here. So we can have several samples. Right now they're frozen, but we can also manage to run new um, I don't know, new, yeah, to, to get new samples, fresh ones. So. Mm -hmm. Mari, do you have the support from Inca? What does Inca think about this? Has this been discussed? This institute, I'm just asking her, is a very important cancer institute in Brazil. They have a lot of samples and a lot of very uh, strong research groups. Have yeah. they been discussing this internally? Well, just uh, in the research, but not like in the whole hospital, but I'm sure they are, they were very glad with the um, CCI grant. So I'm sure they will be very happy and with to very happy to help as well. So I don't think this is going to be a problem. We were all very happy with your CCI grant. We were all very proud. Uh, yeah, it was a, a very big, um, I don't know, like a, um, a very big, uh, how do you say? Um, I, I forgot the word, something that, uh, anyway, we're all very happy, very, very uh, proud of you guys for having got that increase uh, so money. We are yeah. very glad and uh, we are very, yeah, we are willing and to, to help you guys as well and also to fortify this new hub that I'm sure it's gonna, and don't forget that now, now all the eyes are on you and uh, you have to do a great job because you are going to be the reference from Brazil working oh with this. Oh my God, impression <laughs> on me. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. But we, we are very, very uh, uh, sure that you guys are going to do a great job. <laughs> but anyway, we're all like uh, hoping that everything goes as good as possible. Uh, thank you. We'll get back to you. So uh, this is a great strength to have people from the Inca in the, in the group because they're a big cancer center in Brazil. They have a lot of resources, a lot of uh, samples, a lot of patients, uh, clinical trials, right? And uh, a lot of uh, drug uh, response also uh, um, uh, cohorts, right? So it's great. Thank you. Next here in my screen is Dr. Masako Suzuki. Hi. Hello. Hi, my name is Masako Suzuki from Albert Einstein College of Medicine in the New York, the Bronx, New York. And I am interested in the prenatal environment, how that affects to the health of the offspring later in life. Especially the Bronx, we have so many the Hispanic, Latino, the population in here. So that is why I'd like to, to join this team to see, you know, like the actually like the Latino, the Latin American, the, the researcher is working how, you know, like they're working on the single cell, the, the studies. That is why I joined. Mucho gusto. 
Mas, uh, the, uh, that's really great. I was wondering because uh, we didn't have many people coming from the US, right? Yeah. And now I can understand why you joined. And that's yeah. such a great idea. I think this is a great strength for us to yeah. be able to collaborate with a, a group from the US with a population that could be similar to uh, uh, the original uh, countries from Latin America. That's yep. really, really great. I hope this is, I'm sure this will work out. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Uh, let me see if we have someone else that has an, yeah, Vinicius, Vinicius. Hi, Patricia. Um, I am Vinicius Manacaja Coutinho. I'm Brazilian, but I'm currently located in Chile. I am a group leader at the University of Chile, and also I am an associate professor of the Advanced Center for Chronic Disease, which, we, which is one of the center of excellence that we have here in Chile. This is a center that is co-hosted at the University of Chile and the Catholic University of Chile. And in this center, we follow up a cohort of 10,000 people from a particular small town in the south of Chile. And also through ACTIS, ACTIS is the acronym of the center, we can have access to the both uh, University of Chile and Catholic University biobanks. Also, I am um, a permanent faculty of the PhD program on bioinformatics from the Federal University of Rio Grande do Norte in Brazil. And I am director of the of a postgraduate course in bioinformatics and computational biology here in Chile. Uh, my research interests uh, are related to gene regulation and also development of tools for that analysis. And now we are trying to, to, to characterize the, at a single cell level the different non-coding RNAs. And another field of research that we are interested in uh, uh, is the epitranscriptomics. And we would like to go uh, to start to to try to to uh, how can I say to to put together I don't know the nanopore sequencing with with TNX genomics in order to obtain direct RNA sec and then perform deeper analysis in order to identify mod uh, modified sites in these transcripts. Um, right now we 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 we, we Together with other ex center of excellence here in Chile, we applied for a, a, a funding from the national mm -hmm. government related to, to the acquisition of equipment. The results we are expecting last week, but we are not, I don't know, I'm here with another screen updating every time because we can have a, maybe a chromium here <laughs> in Chile in, and the result might, I believe that we will, we will have it today. <laughs> Related to networks. If you I do, am... if you do, don't forget to email us huh? because we are <laughs> all course. expecting that too. Of course, of course. <laughs> um, currently, I am a, a very close uh, collaborator of El de Nakaya and also different groups in Brazil, Argentina, and Peru. And all these, these groups, they are already starting or interested in perform single cell uh, uh, transcriptomics or genomics integrate into their research lines. And also, just to finish, uh, I, I, I am also connected with, with uh, Cabana, that's a national, uh, uh, it's a network led by EBI, the European Bioinformatics Institute, with the aim of, I don't know, um, to improve the, the, the workforce on bioinformatics in Latin America. Together with them, at the beginning of this year, we, we're starting to organize a, a, a hands-on workshop on, on single-cell data analysis. The idea was to have it here at the south of Chile, in the Chilean Patagonia, but the COVID-19 COVID stopped us. <laughs> but we are still planning to, as soon as we have this situation solved, the idea was to, to, to have this hands-on course here in, in, in Chile with people from specifically from Latin America who are doing something on the field, of course, with some speakers from abroad, from EBI and other centers. This is it. Thank you. Uh, this is really great. Uh, I don't know if Jay and 
Christine would like to comment on this because a workshop on data analysis in Chile for South American uh, researchers. I think Wilson is probably involved with that too, right? So, I, I mean, I think it's one of the, the most straightforward things that you can do in a collaborative sense is share data and share code. Um, I would encourage you if you're if you're going to be sharing data to look at the data portal for the HCA. Um, you know, making sure that you've got the metadata associated with the experiments so that the phenotype of the tissues and samples that you've um, collected and also the um, experimental platforms that has been run on are re really well articulated. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure if the data portal are accepting the long read sequencing at the moment, but I certainly know that there is some long read RNA that's being paired with single cell data in the, the kind of nanopore community. Um, yes. So please get in touch if you, if you aren't able to get a hold of any of that. Oh, great. Mm -hmm. Thank I think you. that uh, the organization of uh, the uh, data analysis groups, we have in mind having this uh, uh, core group, right, Wilson, uh, that could be supporting the whole network. Yes, uh, I think it's a great idea, maybe the next semester, the, uh, 2021, to organize one workshop I'm lucky, uh, Latin America uh, single cell workshop with hands on, maybe two or three days for, for lecture to, to training theory about the, the equipment, the method of protocol, and the rest of the, the, the week or, or to do the hands on in different spots like in Chile, in Sao Paulo, Paraná. Mexico, in the same time, we can use the public data. Maybe we can, we can discuss one, one biological question and take the data, the public data, to, to do the green zone. I, I think it's for training people, it's, it's very, 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 mm -hmm. very interesting. For the we have the experience here in some courses, it's worked very well. Mm -hmm. Specifically for what Vinicius is proposing, which is data analysis, you can exactly. do it even if you're not physically uh, together, right? Exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly, and uh, we, we are discussing in, because the, the idea of having this hands-on workshop physically, it's, it's, it was to put together people and they stay there for a week and have all that connections, but at the current situation, I think, we, we, we are discussing with people from EBI to do, change it to an on, online course. And I believe it would be great to have you on it, Wilson. The yeah. idea is to put yeah. together people from, uh, the goal is the same, because we, we are started that with Cabana, with this idea, to put together people from Latin America and, and prioritizing people from here, 10 okay. people from abroad. That's way. I think that's a pretty good uh, uh, point for us to uh, already uh, highlight as a strength, which is data analysis groups organizing themselves for uh, data sharing and uh, protocols and uh, protocols for data analysis. Uh, yeah. that, that's a really great news, Vinicius. And if you can uh, have uh, most of the groups involved, especially if it's going to be um, uh, online, then you can really invite um, a lot of these um, South American groups to join, right? Mm -hmm. That's great. Uh, Marie also is... has a... Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I would like to say that I can also help on that. Yeah, I was going to oh. just say that uh, Mariana has a very good group there too. So yeah, thank you. Thank you, Mariana. Yeah. Can I encourage you to reach out to Timothy Tickle, who's with the, the Human Cell Atlas Data Portal? Um, and I think he would be really interested in, in participating in something like this. Oh, the data portal group are very, very keen to support easy data use um, across the HCA network. And 
they have um, they have a good team, not just um, not just um, with the husbandry of the data, but also they have data wranglers to help you get the data out in the formats you want as well. So they're interested in partnering with communities to understand what it is that your what your use cases for the data are. Yep, you have one here today, so <laughs> uh, okay. any questions? Yeah, sorry, 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 I have. I was just going to say, Eric is here. <laughs> yeah, I have a very unstable connection today, sorry. <laughs> That's why I have my gun turned off. <laughs> That's great. Enrique was uh, in the talk yesterday, remember Vinicius? So uh, he's one of the data wranglers. Um, That's great. And he's a very nice yeah. person, so. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so if you have any question, either about metadata um, or whatever, like a uh, point in the how to start a contribution or whatever, just ask me, uh, can help you. So, or just email the uh, uh, data, the data wrangler team at wrangler-data at, uh, let me check that again. <laughs> and then just delete it to me, so. Um, you can send it to, yeah. to us in the chat. I think that's good. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. I will send it one second. Okay. That's great. So good to have one, one of them here today. I think that's uh, one of the things that can, uh, data analysis is what we can do, right? Uh, first, and it's very important to have it going before we have actually data from biology. So I think it's uh, great what you guys are doing. Um, All right, so let me see. Next here in my screen is Hernandez Carvalho. Hi. Hello. Hi, hello. Uh, I am from Campinas, Sao Paulo. I teach cell biology in the University of Campinas, or better known as Unicamp. And I've been working with the prostate gland, mostly using animal models. And I've been doing some chip sec, RNA sec, attack sec, sick like for to answer specific questions, but never work with single cells. And I believe this is a good opportunity to change to the gears in my lab just to go into human samples and perhaps doing single cell analysis. I'm very enthusiastic of this approach. So I'm very excited. That's great, great, and then it's great to have somebody from Unicampi here, right? You can also uh, uh, stimulate your uh, colleagues over there to to join us, right? Because sure, Unicampi sure. is huge, right? So we get, we're trying to reach out for uh, these big uh, centers in Brazil, and great, great, great to have you here. You have a lot of experience in RNA seq, attack seq, and other methodologies that you can also uh, share with us. Thank sure. you, thank you so much. Next here in my screen is Gustavo. Hi, Gustavo. Hey, hello, everyone. I'm Gustavo Marenti Mendes. I am a professor and the vice director of the Institute of Biomedical Science, where the same as uh, Marileni and Lucio uh, are operating. Uh, I am somewhere in between cell biology and immunology. So I work quite a bit in the past uh, with leukemia. Now I'm moving to melanoma. Uh, I'm interested in uh, also in, uh, from the immunology point of view, the macrophages dynamics and um, CD8 T cell differentiation tumor microenvironment. Uh, I'm developing uh, organoids as well, like uh, artificial skin. Mostly with, uh, we're working with mice. Uh, also, we have connections to different hospitals, uh, including the Einstein Hospital where Patty uh, works. Um, so I have a personal, in I have never work uh, with single cell. Uh, I'd like to add that to the, the projects, to the approach we are using in the lab. 
But also as the vice uh, director of the institute, we want to be one of the reference institute in Brazil. We already have uh, huge um, facilities uh, where from proteomics, genomics, flow cytometry imaging that we offer service to the whole community. Again, particularly in the city and state of Sao Paulo, but also people from all over the country come to us to develop some of the, uh, their experiments. So we would like to add up the single cell and be one of the references in the area. Thank you. Thank you so much, Gustavo. Gustavo is very, very experienced in all these topics and has been working with uh, cell biology and molecular biology for the longest time, also immunology and uh, um, the infrastructure of University of Sao Paulo and specifically of the Biosciences Institute is very, very uh, um, useful, important, uh, really essential to us. So thank you, Gustavo, for joining us and uh, Pointing that out, it's very important to have uh, your institute like, committed to this, right? I know the facilities are great, so we Here. will be using them. Thank you. <laughs> Next, we have another uh, colleague from University of Sao Paulo, is um, Tatiana Malta. Hi, everyone. Yeah, so uh, I'm current and young investigator. Uh, yeah, I'm a grantee of one of these grants from FAPESP to help uh, young people start their own lab. So uh, I started my group one year ago at uh, a School of Pharmaceutical Sciences here in Ribeirão Preto. Um, I have some experience in data analysis. I worked with, in a couple of projects in the context of the Cancer Genome Atlas, or TCGA. And my main goal right now is studying stemness in cancer. So that's part of my Young Investigator grant. And, but we are in this time that we, we notice that we, we acknowledge that the single cell data can improve our, uh, our work. And we are very interested in studying the tumor microenvironment right now, specifically in longitudinal uh, samples from gliomas, primaries, and recurrences. And we, I have a student that uh, has been working with single cell public data, but uh, we realized that most of the work that has been published focused on the tumor cells and we are kind of more interested in the non-tumor cells or the immune infiltration. So I'm interested in generate some data and I have access to tumor banks both here in Ribeirão Preto and also uh, in the US. And I love to collaborate with people here. I, I noticed that there might have some um, interests in common. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Tatiana. Yeah, a lot of people here talked about uh, um, uh, nervous systems uh, cancer. And so, yeah, yeah, I think I'm sure. Plus to have a group of people from the University of Sao Paulo who are engaged, uh, that's really uh, important too. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. also actually, uh, I also have a collaboration where we are interested in studying the inflammatory aspects of the sickle cell disease. So I also have access with people here at the blood center. And actually we are right now trying to get funding to support this, this project. Yeah, mm -hmm. so. A biobank, okay, that, that's, that's great. I think that will be uh, good for us to talk a little bit about biobanks and uh, sample sharing in a bit. We have, I think, two more people who haven't spoken. So I have Dalia Ramirez. Hi. Hi, everyone. Hi, Dalia. Dalia is also from Mexico, right? Yes. Hello, everyone. My name is Dalia Ramirez. I, I am an associate researcher in Mexico. I am currently working on acute lymphoblastic leukemia which is the main cause of death worldwide in, period, in pediatric patients due to malignoplasms. We perform cytomic of the patient to try to identify leukemia initiating cells and the accompaniment of the uh, tumor by immune cells and how they are remodeled by the tumor microenvironment. The reason of being here is to learn about a little a little more about the big data analy analysis and other approaches to address the pathology. 
Mm-hmm. Have you uh, in your in your do you work with uh, uh, patients, right? You have yes. pa- uh, patient samples, right? Okay, yes. that, that, that's that's bone marrow samples. Mm-hmm. Thank you, thank you so much, Dalia. Thank you. And uh, who hasn't spoken? Uh, Joaquin, right? Joaquin Garat from uh, Uruguay. Hi, I am. I am from Montevideo, Uruguay, and I am in my last stages of master's degree in the genomics department. And well, our group is interested and has experience in gene, in gene regulation analysis, such as transcriptomics and translatomics. And well, as a part of my thesis, we propose to start analyzing single cell RNA data in order to analyze uh, ribosomal proteins, mRNA levels in single neurons. Uh, part of these results were presented by Pablo yesterday. Perhaps uh, you yeah. have listened to them. Right? Yes. Yes. And well, I am currently learning how to analyze correctly this, dat- this data and uh, I'm willing to learn more and apply this, uh, these things to more projects. And great, stuff. great. You guys have a lot of experience with uh, gene regulation and I talked a little bit with Pablo yesterday. He said mm-hmm. you'd be joining us uh, from Uruguay. Yes. Yeah, it, it, it's great. We would, we would like really to have a person from each one of the Latin American countries in each group so we could interact mm-hmm. and uh, uh, really maybe get together on something already. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for being here. Uh, I have also here uh, Mauro Castro. Mauro is also from um, uh, from Brazil, but from uh, the yeah, right from uh, São Paulo State. Let me see if he's here. Hi, Mauro. Oh, we cannot hear you. Mauro is from Federal University of Paraná. Ah, from Paraná. We can hear you now. Ah, no, we can hear you very, very, very low. Can you put your volume up? A little better now. Little, little better. A little. Sorry, I am in the mask. I we cannot really hear you. Wilson, yeah. do you want to can, introduce him? Can, or can you can you try without the the phone? Hello, can you hear it better now? No, no, no. Now it's um uh, some very high background noise. Let me let me try to uh, off and log in again. Okay. okay, but can you hear us well? You can hear us. Perfect. Okay. Okay, okay, so we wait for you to join later. Okay, thank you. Uh, I have another person here that haven't hasn't talked. Eduardo? Eduardo? Um, hello? I mean, hello. Hi. It's Eduardo, I'm from Brazil. Uh, oh, okay. Universidade Federal de Santa Catarina. Maybe the only one from Santa Catarina here. For sure, yes. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, uh, I have been working uh, with single cell genomics since 2015, when the data okay. sets have only about 50 cells. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> and now we have this explosion in cell numbers. I did pretty much all my postdoctoral training at George Data Lab oh. at Harvard Medical School. And I have access to these technologies and analytical tools since they were in their early stages. So I have, I'm, I'm very much experienced in that. Uh, I returned to Brazil like by the end of 2018 and started my lab here at the Universidade Federal de Santa Catarina by the end of 2019, like November or so. And <clears throat> my lab focuses mostly on developing new methods for analyzing single cell data. I'm originally a, a computer computer scientist, which 
migrated to, to biology over the years. And I have experience in every stage of uh, experimental okay. design, sample collection, and especially develop new algorithms that can help to address new questions. And in my lab, we do a lot of methods development and also experimental work in, in cancer and stem cells, especially trying to learn how uh, the immune system develops, develops from hematopoietic stem cells in the bone marrow, and then try to engineer induced pluripotent stem cells to create immune cells for cancer immunotherapy. That's one of the research lines in my lab right now. Uh, since I started, I have been applying to several grants, international and national ones, to, to get started in, in some, some projects that we are about to start in the lab soon. Uh, basically, uh, that's it. I have a lot of experience with methods development and analysis of uh, single, de single cell data in cancer, stem cells, and uh, any other tissue that might be of interest. It's really, really great to hear from you. I was wondering why we had missed you last year when we were uh, wor uh, doing the workshops, uh, because we were looking for people that had experience. But I suppose because you were not here, right? You just came back. Yeah, I just came back. And also, uh, I think I'm a little bit shy. So uh, I was trying to... Avoid us. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Too bad. Now I cannot avoid us anymore because now we, yeah. know, we know where you are. Yeah, but and... actually I started last year. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm only now trying to build connections here in Brazil because I spent like four years abroad, four or five years abroad. And mm -hmm. now I'm... I'm hopeful to connect to people here in Brazil and hopefully do some exciting science together. Mm -hmm. as, as you can see, we have uh, quite a few people who talked here who are really looking at for, forward to building a, a group to work with mm -hmm. single cell analysis. So you're most <clears throat> welcome. It's great to know that you are in Santa Catarina because we hardly ever hear from uh, Santa Catarina, right? In our, uh, um, I hope to change that, to, exactly. to change that a little bit. Yes, you're also near Wilson and his uh, institute in Paraná. So uh, that's cool. also great. I really hope you guys are going to get connected and start working together. Yeah, you know? awesome. Mm -hmm. Sounds great. That's, that's, nice to meet you, Wilson. Yeah, that, that nice was you, a too. very great surprise to meet you here today. Thank you. Let's Thank talk you. about that. Appreciate that. Mm. <laughs> and uh, so the, the IPS models of um, of blood development are really fascinating, I think. And there's some interesting parallels coming out from a few people speaking about um, the role of the immune system and uh, inflammatory cells in different tumor micro environments. And I think being yep. able to model that from a pluripotent stem cell is really powerful because you've got opportunities of adding some of the lineage tracing tools uh, and um, some of the reporter tools to look at uh, immune uh, tumor interactions that are hard to introduce to the primary cell. So that's really exciting technology. That's Thank great. You. Eduardo, are you setting up also the wet lab uh, research or data analysis? Or are you going to do, be doing data Yes, um, my hope is that my lab is going to do both the, the wet lab and the dry lab uh, research. And I have been applying for grants to fund the, the dry lab uh, aspects of the work because uh, working with, with uh, pluripotent stem cells is quite expensive. And, and here at yeah. uh, Universidade Federal de Santa Catarina, I don't know, I don't know anybody who actually does that. So I'm I have connections with uh, Lija Pereira. He she is in a, another session, and yeah, she yeah. she's she's providing me some very very valuable feedback to set up um, blue reporting stem cell lab here in the south. And let, let's see how it goes. But uh, most of the work that we are doing in the lab right now, it's um, the, the dry lab stuff regarding novel uh, development of new algorithms and reanalyzing data to generate hypotheses for when the money comes from the wet lab stuff. 
we have everything in place to to get started on that that's that's great that's great to hear yeah. meanwhile if you can join with people who are doing um uh, getting together for data analysis that's going to be just yeah. that's fantastic mm -hmm. okay yeah. we have uh one more person who recently joined us here is uh catherine Hello, everybody. Um, I'm, talking from, I'm talking with you from France. <laughs> I work in a commercial platform focused on NGS. And we recently, I am in charge of making the validation for C marking uh, software for data analysis in cancer. And we are trying to develop for our customers new NGS techniques from wet lab to uh, dry lab and data interpretation in a regulated context so for delivering for delivery of uh, clinical results and i have a great interest in knowing what's going on in single cell and uh, generally interpretation of mi microenvironment in, in cancer biology i think it i think that if you can help us use uh, different technologies or complementary technologies that we're doing i think that uh, I think that'll be really great to have you around. So feel free to give your opinion to uh, my, your my pleasure. <laughs> yes, uh, please share that with us. I think that with Catherine, we have uh, heard from anyone. Is there anyone there that hasn't been um, contacted? I think I managed uh, to come Maud back again. Maud is back. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Sorry for. Um, my internet connection. Uh, I hope the connection is, is better now. Can, can you hear great. me? Okay. Yeah. Uh, so first of all, I would like to congr uh, congratulate the, the, the initiative to, to bring this, uh, this meeting to, to Latin America. It's great. Yeah. And, and for us that are really uh, keen on that analysis, this is, this is even more great. Yeah. Um, my name is Mauro Castro. I am professor at the uh, UFPR University at uh, Paraná, and I am a group leader in the area of bioinformatics. I coordinate um, a brand new PhD course that should start next month to, uh, to contribute with human resources in the area, um, which I think is great for our state here. Uh, this is the first PhD course in the in the south of Brazil, uh, dedicated to bioinformatics, and um, we are very enthusiastic in terms of community to bring people together and uh, uh, to dedicate for efforts to assess high quality and high standard data data sets produced by consortiums. Um, we have close collaborations with uh, several groups here in Brazil and the United States, in Canada, in UK, in Holland. And um, so uh, we personally, uh, my group is dedicated to develop new methods in the area of data analysis, focusing on cancer research. Um, um, one of the key aspects of my group is to uh, try to find master regulators and in cancer, um, master regulators and modulators in cancer, um, using what we call global coherent data sets. For example, uh, when you, for the same set of samples, you have genome, epigenome, transcriptomes, ATX, ATAC, SEC data, um, uh, methylation data, and to integrate all these multiple levels of uh, information for the same set of samples, which uh, it's really challenge, not just for us, but for all the collaborators that I, I have the experience to work with. Um, single cell uh, analysis bring another level of complexity, <laughs> turn lives much more interesting, but much, much more challenged. So- Have you tried that yet? Uh, we 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 currently have some methods that we uh, are trying to migrate from bulk tissue to single cell, but they are not yet available for a community. Mm -hmm. 
uh, we have some uh, collaboration with Penn State University at the uh, United States um, um, with some very, very early initiative to try to transform some of our methods to query uh, master regulators in single cell uh, data sets. But okay. as I said, this is very mature, very early, but we okay. are very enthusiastic in, in doing this, this, this bridge between bulk okay. tissue and single cell. That's really great to have you also from Paraná. Uh, I think that if we think about Brazil, Brazil incorporates many different countries because uh, we're so big. So it's great to have people with uh, contacts in the north and in the center and in the south. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. I think we got to hear everybody and we have a very good idea of what we have within this uh, break session uh, group to discuss some specific points of uh, what we want to bring to the rest of the, of the, of the group, to the big group. Uh, when we think about how we could best collaborate with a human cell atlas, uh, we have some shared interests here, but it's a group that is working with uh, cancer and uh, stem cells. In this context, any opinions about our specific strengths on that? I heard about some rare t uh, kind of cancer that hasn't been uh, studied and organoid mod models too. Yes, so uh, I could start. <laughs> uh, indeed, we we are uh, we think this is uh, a strength of maybe something we could we could study. Actually, I've been talking to Mari, uh, who's also here, and Patricia, who's also asked to be in this meeting, but she was put in the inherited diseases one. Mm -hmm. uh, but we've been talking about this for some time now, and uh, I think, or we think, it's uh, a good a good thing that we could uh, let's say direct from from this area of the world also with Asian countries because it's also a very important disease over there uh, so we yeah we've been collecting samples from Brazilian patients and Mexican patients and doing uh, many different studies uh, we think this is a strength because we have been able to also get funding internationally from uh, Wellcome Trust from Medical Research Council uh, also nationally because it's it's actually not very well studied the disease and I am not aware of any, for example, transcriptomic data sets, even bulk that have been published uh, from this. So I would, I would think it's a good, uh, at least one of the things we could suggest could be focused on that. And I know there's other, there's also interest from other people in this. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, I, I've been writing with everyone as, as my, my job as secretary here, I, what everyone has been uh, saying. And, and I also heard uh, another researcher, I'm looking here to my um, notes uh, that also mentioned melanoma and uh, Gustavo, mm -hmm. right? Uh, so could also be interesting for him mm -hmm. as well. And uh, also Mari from Inca that could look into this uh, specific cancer types that are more rare and possibly more common in uh, uh, Brazil and Mexico. And that could be um, um, also uh, assessed, right? Yeah, right. uh, if, we think, if, if we think about that and uh, the biobanks that I wanted to get back to, because we have quite a few groups here that mentioned they have biological samples. Before we talk about that, just to wrap up that one big strength that we saw in this group is that we have a lot of people engaged in data analysis. So I think that for data analysis, we have a, a lot of co um, already consistency in what's being done, different groups they share a lot of in common about how they want to proceed with that. So that we can already say that's a great strength that we have already been established, right? And uh, considering then the biology, we may consider that we have rare uh, samples. So uh, samples from uh, rare cancer types, for example, that could be studied in different ways and that would be more typical or uh, found in um, Brazil or Mexico, for example. And if we don't think about the other, uh, about the, the specific cancer types, we also have a lot of resources considering biobanks in general, right? We have a lot of 
samples that should include a lot of genetic diversity? What do you think about that? I, maybe I just want to comment that biobanks are great. And um, I think Orit from MIT mentioned this yesterday at the uh, Technology Standard Working Group is you can use nuclear sequencing, single nuclear sequencing. Mm -hmm. And that really allows you to extract the, the nucleus and profile the gene expression without dissociation. So as long as the tissues are well preserved, you should be able to do single nuclear sequencing. And if, although you, I think you do have to be aware that uh, there are discrepancies between dissociated approach and the nuclear approach. Mm -hmm. I think she already also mentioned, for instance, that immune, infiltrated immune cells will be very different. Um, so if you're studying uh, T cells, for instance, I think one of the members here was interested in that. Uh, you might need to just keep aware of, of that. Um, so yeah, I, I think this is a very good strength that you guys have a biobanks that can already be accessible for single cell sequencing. So. Jay? Jay, Jay I think, um, yes, um, Masako? Yeah, so like, Jay, you said the, there are some like the important part for like the having a biobank is how you st uh, the store the samples, right? Does the, it's, uh, the human cell atlas group provide how should we store the specimens from the after we, the, we collected the samples? I think that will be a very good information for like the, everybody who has started the collecting the samples. Yes, so, so there are, General approaches are kind of the snap, free, snap frozen. So if you're taking resections or biopsies, um, I think the most standard way uh, snap fro freezing. But once you do that, uh, you are committing yourself to do nuclear extraction, right? Because it is nearly impossible to dissociate cells once they're frozen. Um, so, so that's why I think you know, biobanks that already have been collected, you may have to resort to uh, nuclear sequencing. However, um, if you do plan to do whole cells, um, I believe there are various protocols out there to encourage people to dissociate first and then freeze down, and that preserves the quality of the RNA. Uh, and there are various protocols depending on the tissue and the cancer type. Uh, that you will need to implement and, and, and test and verify and, and QC uh, and, and HCA does provide that uh, um, either at the protocols.io or uh, from ORIT's, ORIT's uh, presentation, the, the standardization working group also provides some recommendations. So I don't know if that answered your question. Yeah, I think that that's great because the, we do have biobanks, quite a few in the country, and some of them are very populated with completely different uh, population characteristics. I think this is great. But many of them are also collecting prospectively. So it's very good to uh, have this information about how we could uh, move from, uh, from now on if we want to include single cell analysis. Uh, yeah. That's uh, really course, great. Um, yeah. There's there's a spatial technology that are on the horizon as well. So if you mm -hmm. have biobank samples, you can already do spatial transcriptomics as, as mm -hmm. long as the RNA is good quality. Mm -hmm. I think it's also important to remember that um, a lot of these methods are still under development and uh, there isn't a perfect way to isolate all of the cells from any one tissue that's universal across all tissues. So you really will want to draw on your own expertise of working with, with that particular tissue type to get the best out of it. Uh, and if you're interested in the immune cell components, then particularly the, um, the myeloid cells, the granular sites are very hard to isolate using disassociation techniques. You, you may be better off with the, uh, the snap frozen if you want to capture that immune um, component. That's also great to, great to know. Um, okay. 
Um, I don't know how it works for other countries. We have Mexico, Uruguay, and Chile here, and also the US. Uh, in Brazil, we have ethical uh, committees that uh, regulate the use of uh, samples. And it's often complicated for us to uh, ship samples to be analyzed abroad, unless it, there is a very clear uh, need for that to be done. Does anyone want to comment on that? Does anyone have experience with uh, this kind of work? Or we could also discuss that each country can manipulate their own samples and share data. Yeah? So I can say, or mm -hmm. if, I don't know if someone else wants to speak. <laughs> You can yeah, speak. Okay. okay. Uh, we have sent samples indeed to uh, uh, the Sanger Institute to be, uh, we have sent uh, paraffin blocks and uh, DNA mm -hmm. uh, just like that. And it wasn't, e it wasn't difficult to send uh, from Mexico. We, we hired this UPS company called uh, Marken and they they handled everything basically they told us don't worry we see this with the authorities and we just they just came and collected the box and took it and in two days it was there we sent samples to brazil to patricia posik at inca uh who's working with mari and they and that, those were those were uh frozen samples uh and they also reached there in under two days with the same company so it seems that at least for us sending samples outside is not a problem People say that importing them back is a problem. So we haven't done that yet. Uh, but For us, here's the opposite. We have I no problem receiving the opposite, them, but right? if we ship them, it's, it's very complicated. Uh, it's the opposite. I, I would have thought that should be the case in a way because you're sending samples outside, you know, is your resource. Uh, but it doesn't seem, at least in, in my experience so far, it doesn't seem to be the case uh, uh, it's it's been easy at least to mm -hmm. Brazil and to uh, the UK to send samples we don't know how easy it is to receive them but mm -hmm. yes. the reason I'm bringing this up is because I think it's always feasible and each country is going to have their own regulations right so it can be more or less difficult so I think that is okay but the reason I'm bringing this up is because we seem to have a, a, a path to go before we can really process samples over here. And there is the funding issue. So if we can get funding for, from partners abroad to run, for example, wet lab experiments, and we could do data analysis or part of the analysis being done abroad, like spatial analysis, for example, where we're gonna be sending up slides or nuclear sequencing if we have frozen samples, that could be an alternative. Does anyone want to talk about that? If, for example, we would like to send it to, I don't know if Edmund is uh, here. Matsi, May I talk about Edmund that? has his hand up. Yeah. Uh, I think I just might have a comment because since we are about to set up this from scratch here, maybe. It, it might be important to think about technologies that we can collect the data right on the bad side, let's say like that. Because 10x is great, but you have to have the equipment and move that around, it, which I don't think is a good idea. And for really precious primary samples, frozen them down and then shipping them abroad, I don't think that's going to produce really good quality data. At least when I was uh, in Boston and I, I used it to generate data in the Harvard single cell core facility, they were very explicit about uh, us giving them uh, high quality viable cells. So the data is not going to be good, at least with the uh, in drop seek type of technology. I don't know how robust this becomes the last year or so, because there's been two years that I don't generate any new data using any of the single cell technologies. But as far as I can tell, primary samples, they, they are going to be precious, especially for rare tumors. And we should also think about a way to collect the samples on the, on the site of collection. And for that, I use it, for example, SQL from Alex Shalek lab. I actually use that in, the, in uh, a postdoc in his lab, came, a, came by to our lab and prepared the samples with us. Yeah, and I think it's a good technology for these more precious samples. 
Yeah, yeah. Sequel has to be established in the lab too. So it's possible, of course, we could have a collaboration to, to do that. But, uh, and I think everybody agrees with that. If you're talking about uh, live cells and for uh, transcriptomics of uh, uh, live cells, you are completely correct. We are here considering besides that to have collaborators that could sequence your libraries or that they could do spatial biology uh, in slides or single uh, nucleus single sequencing on frozen tissue. But you're completely right. It's very important for us to keep in mind that if we want to sequence live cells, uh, it's going to have to be on site or somebody can sequence your libraries later on. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Just to keep in mind uh, as we are uh, to... about to design this. Sorry. Yeah. I, I saw Mary had her hand up as well. Mary? Yeah, Mary? I did, but actually you uh, made the points I would like to, to, to make as well. But just to let you know, guys, that uh, we are trying to acquire um, the 10x equipment, and so it would be easy also to manage um, the library's preparation and so on. So we can. I think we're going to. Yeah, I think we already have uh, Wilson with one machine in Sao Paulo. Lucio has one. There is another one in Ribeirão Preto, I guess. So we need many ones because we cannot be also uh, walking around with the cells. So it's great to know. Great to know that you're going to have one. Okay. Anyone Mama? else wants to comment on this? Uh it's not uh, directly related to this, but now that you're talking about reagents and all of that, I don't think this is highlighted enough in the HCA talks. Actually, when you are registered with the HCA, you get some discounts. I have just posted something. It's not too well formatted, sorry. <laughs> uh, you get some discount in Tenex Genomics, in Bio uh, Legend, Nanostring, in Takara View, and registering is free. Um, I don't know the specifics about those discounts, so sorry about that, but you can email them and ask them about it. That's um, great, that's great to know. Yeah, I don't think everybody here was aware of it, but yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think, yeah, for, for setting it up, I think it's actually pretty important. And yeah, it's not to, to highlight it. I didn't no, even it, know, it's, know about it's, this. It's really before, great to like, talk about that. Yes, it's true. I mean, everything that we mm -hmm. can like cut costs on, it's, uh, it's really important. Uh, mm -hmm. This could bring us to uh, financial uh, resources. We have seen here that quite a few groups have infrastructure to help out and could uh, do part of the, uh, um, of the work, right? But there is having access to funding for the experiments themselves. Does anyone want to comment about that? Um, ideas on how we could fund groups to collaborate? Uh, yeah, I'd like to talk a little bit about that. Um, of course, uh, today, the, the, the current situation, I believe in, in all Latin America is a little bit hard for funding. I believe all countries are, are, are dealing with the same issue. <clears throat> but of course we can, we can once, at least for, for the, once we have uh, the funding for at least to generate an experiment and you need to have, I don't know, money for that analysis, uh, th there are some, some several initiatives that I, 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 when I was in Brazil, I never heard about, but I, here in Chile, I have seen, there are several fellowships that you can send students abroad along South America and Latin America. I, for example, last year, a student was, for six months in Cordoba, Argentina with Elme Fernandez. And this is a very interesting way on how to send some student to, to have funding, to send some student to, to other groups, to establish the collaboration also for the training of these students. And also there are some fellow, some grants for, they are not for, to fund your research, but at least to fund a, a collaborative initiative. Cited, there are several that every year we have these grants available and I believe we should do something with that related specifically to single cell and uh, 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 in Latin America. Yeah? I believe this is something that we need to explore more. 
that's a great point. We don't always have access to all that is available and we tend to be looking always at the same agencies. That's very good. I think that if we can have a small group uh, sharing um, uh, these possibilities, uh, it's great. And for sharing uh, for the transfer uh, transference of students. I mean, yeah, for training, that's what we need. Thank you. Yeah, let's put let's take note of that. Uh, Daniela, yeah. Yes, I'd like to share there as well. Of course, I, I as I did say, I do not have experience with single cell uh, sequencing yet, but I have. Uh, seen that there's uh, several international um, uh, cons uh, consortia or, or foundations that do uh, award fellowships and, and grants to Latin American countries. Uh, for example, the Wellcome Trust has very good uh, uh, fellowships that will fund, for example, a mid-career research during Latin America for Do your experiments. You don't really have to justify a lot what you have, to, what you want to do. Just have a, you know, a research plan, and you can use it as as you see fit. That's a very good option. The Medical Research Council in the UK. If you have a partner in the UK, they will send a good, you know, good money and a part of a good grant uh, to Latin America. And the Newton Fund. The Newton Fund uh, does a lot of funding also. In, in the last round was for Brazil. I think they 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 have a country or two or three countries that they choose somehow <laughs> every every uh, round. Okay. And the last one, as I remember, was for Brazil. Uh, so those ones are also very good options. That's for training, indeed, uh, with a partner in the UK that, that you know, if, if mm -hmm. you have someone that you collaborate with and they fund all the travel, all the conferences uh, for them to give and teach and you can go and work and that kind of thing. Uh, so. Yeah, could we consider then that uh, funding, even though for us it would be uh, a challenge, we do have opportunities that are unexplored and those opportunities could be considered strengths. Like in two minutes, we listed a lot of things that maybe are not within our radar. So we could propose to have a small group of us that are going to be monitoring and sharing this within Latin American uh, interested groups. Yes. 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 The, the, there are some considerations related to the funding from from UK. For example, the Welcome Trust funding, Chile and, and Uruguay, they cannot have access to that because oh, they are high income arrived. country. Yeah. Ah. For example, we are not part of, of officially part of Cabana, but we are unofficially part of Cabana. But if we are all collaborating and someone gets the yeah. grant, then it would yeah. be okay, right? So uh, I think the important thing is to be in touch so we can know about the opportunities. And, and something really nice is that Chile started to be part of uh, uh, EMBU uh, as a foreigner country and can apply to some funding from EMBU directly. For example, for the course that we are discussing with EBI, we, it would be a, an EMBU workshop. That's, that's really great. That's really great. So let's put it that we would like to have this little uh, committee group of people that are going to be monitoring and sharing between the groups that later on decide to really be part of this and communicating so we can all have access maybe to, to this. Okay. And can it's great I to know comment? that Chile is doing so well. So can I comment about uh, yes, yes, sure. So, so equity and e equity working group was presented yesterday. And I think this is one of the major uh, missions of the human cell atlas and to ensure that the data is actually generated by the, the sample providers themselves and that it's not shipped across to Boston or to UK, but it is actually building grassroots uh, research groups that are able to generate um, their own data set and, and, and deposit into the human cell atlas. So there is a strong uh, motivation and I believe CZI and other funders who, are, who have been supporting HCA are also on board with that mission. Uh, so what I, what I mean by that is uh, if there's a push to uh, create such programs where you, you will train the people and, and, and provide the 
the pipelines and the network, um, as long as um, you are providing value to HCA database, uh, that will have a good, uh, I guess, an opportunity to apply for funding with CCI. I guess CCI usually is kind of, HCA is a healthy reference. So we talked about cancer previously, and it may be difficult just to say we will profile cancer samples. So you would need to consider how to balance the healthy aspect and the disease aspect when you're applying with uh, CDI. Uh, but nevertheless, the, the, the motivations to make the data set more equitable is, is high priority for us. Um, but you know, one strategy might be to actually invite those funders to come to your planning meeting, ask them to um, sit in and see where the priorities are for you and help them set the right scheme for you. Um, and I think that you will find that the CZI, funders like the CZI, uh, Welcome, Gates and so on will come and spend time talking to you about what your needs are. I think that's a great idea for uh, uh, one of the ways to go. I think that's a very good idea. Get the funders together and uh, see how they would like to see this going. Um, and we would share with them what we have and what we're thinking and hear from them. Yeah, I mean, I think it's important that you're helping them set their funding agenda. Okay. If this is going to be truly uh, equitable access um, mm -hmm. to these and, and equitable about capability building. I think that's a great idea. I also want to mention, um, you know, NIH has many funds that a lot uh, invites foreign um, collaborations or even foreign researchers can apply directly. So um, there's one that that's, I'm- That's getting tougher, Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> it's getting tougher. It's um, but may, maybe finding a partner like Masako. <laughs> yes, Masako. <laughs> <laughs> and and co-apply, right? Um, yeah. I'm also happy someone... to, um, actually, Arbat Einstein has the 10x machine, and then, like, we have the sequencer as well, and then, like, the, we are also the partner with the New York Genome Center. So, like, the, that's the, the New York Genome Center has, like, the, a lot of, like, the technical the development as well. So, like, the, if, you know, like, the, the starting collaboration is a uh, good thing to like the for like the making like a good network group and then I'm very interesting to the work on the Hispanic Latin population in here as well as the the, the country I should not say but the original but the, the original country as well mm -hmm. that's a great idea I think that yeah. is a great idea well we're coming to the end of our uh, so session I think the, together the ge genetics uh, yes Jay please Oh, no, no, go ahead. I'm done. No, no. Well, yeah, no, it's just that we have some time and I would like yeah, us yeah. to know if we, there is something else that everybody has the urge to talk about. We have some minutes still, so it would be good if we would like to discuss anything else. Okay, well, I was going to mention, uh, ge so genetic diversity being one of the importance. Um, and so, um, as, as I mentioned in my presentation yesterday, there are very even Asians are underrepresented significantly and makes the clinical use very limiting. Um, so yeah, I think there are fundings as well that really uh, encouraging more data production from um, underrepresented regions. So I think um, starting with you know, genotyping and doing some single cell PBMCs, um, it, it's, not a very sexy <laughs> disease per se, but I think it really helps to uh, learn the ropes, you know, trying to get IRBs approved, the ethics, learning how to multiplex and building the communication channels across different laboratories, kind of starting with PBMCs and um, genotyping and, and trying to integrate data set um, and build upon 
build upon from that experience to more complex tissues. And there's, of course, you can start with cancer or start with brain but tissues. I, I think but. you're making a very good point, uh, Jay, about uh, how do we want to start? Because right, yeah. if we pull together to start with something that is maybe not that fancy, but everybody could collaborate a little bit, you know, and we could find a way to finance genetic diversity, which is something that hasn't really been. May I, may I comment? Some? Yes, of course. Uh, Jay, uh, you said to, to study genetic diversity for reference population for, or for disease. What are you, because- uh, I think it's we, reference uh, population. Yeah, because yesterday I, I mentioned in my pre presentation, we are uh, maybe in October, we are launching one, one project for, for sequence uh, is at least 1,000 uh, people from the Guarapuava city. And the idea is exactly to, to know the genetic diversity of the city and use this information to try to implement the uh, precision medicine. And also we are, of course, collect stamp from different diseases, including cancer. And uh, maybe we can discuss more about that because it's not the, the representative from Brazil population, but from the cities, specific from the Guarapuava city. I think it is more easy to, to know and to manage the, the information, try to, to understand one part of the diversity of the Brazilian population. Maybe uh, I think it, it, it's very nice if, if we, we can discuss about that together. Yeah, I, I think that's excellent. And, and, and if you already have the access to cohorts and individuals, yeah. What, only only thing that you can do is then add the single cell PBMCs, right? So you already have yeah, plans yeah. to do genotyping or genome sequencing. You already have the samples, so you just take the yeah. PBMC and run, run. And and you can do EQTLs. You can do very interesting uh, additional analysis that could be very valuable. So, yeah, I think it's a really good starting point. Yeah, uh, which may help to build connections. Yeah. Guys, we have Enrique Hernandez who wants to uh, ask a question too or to contribute. Yes, I, I wanted to uh, contribute by, by telling that uh, perhaps half of us are computational biologists. So you, we have a strong analytics, uh, let's say, power here. And from a uh, past experience with the International Cancer Genome Consortium, uh, we, we had a lot of trouble in setting up like analytical standards, standards of analysis. So uh, perhaps the, the Broad Institute pipeline uh, somehow uh, established as the standard, but there were many different uh, types of analytical approaches that were not uh, like given a following. So perhaps we may think about forming some kind of network or some kind of task force to join forces and to establish the best practices of analysis uh, for this uh, type of data uh, early on so that uh, the, the different uh, expertises and, and so on may uh, in some sense converge to have a well-defined high quality uh, uh, computational pipeline. So that, that, that may be uh, a good goal to, to start or to establish uh, here. That's a great point. Uh, do you want to comment on this, Jay? Or Enrique? Um, yeah, may, maybe Enrique can comment quickly, but maybe um, I would highly encourage you to connect with the global HCA. Um, there are a analysis working group who have been investing a lot of time to set the right standards. However, I do recognize that it's not always easy to connect with the global uh, ACA. And also a lot of these pipelines, uh, depending on the technology you use and which biological questions you may have or which analysis you plan to do, 
So I, I, I agree. I think it's excellent idea to formulate a regional working group uh, regarding the analysis, but at the same time, trying to stay in line with the global HCA so you don't necessarily reinvent the wheel. Um, yeah, but then still you have your own kind of ownership and leadership into that in the region. I think that's very important. I think that's a very good point. I would suggest, I don't know what uh, Vinicius, uh, Wilson, and Eduardo, all the other ones that are working with data analysis, maybe the way to go would be for you guys to have a group that would uh, join forces, sit together, and uh, think about how to go about this. So people are not reinventing the wheel, or not like maybe even within Latin America, redoing the same things. Do you, I don't know if you think this is a good idea. Eduardo wants to comment, please. Uh, hello, uh, yes, so uh, I'm developing my lab, uh, what I'm calling a, a fr framework for unified single cell analysis. I try to follow the standards from the AGSC as, as best as I can, but the software is still on, under development. And it's going to include uh, features for multimodal uh, single cell analysis, integration scriptum, site seek, and also single cell attack seek. And also, it's going to put together the same computational platforms, the algorithms that I have been developing over the years, including uh, classical clustering, differential expression, but also trajectory inference algorithm that I have developed in the past year. And another ones that I have been implementing uh, in my lab uh, along the year. So I'm trying to put together a computational platform that integrates several uh, features that are used for single cell analysis that are not yet uh, Ready, readily available through any other uh, software package. So it's not going to reinvent any analytical tools that are already available, but it's going to include the new tools that I hope, hopefully new tools that I'm now developing in, in the lab to integrate single cell data in multiple levels in one single platform. So we, we can push together to maybe make this um, high standard in terms of uh, the quality of the software, because I'm pretty much developing this with a scientific initiation student. So it, it, it requires a lot of software engineering to make this globally useful, let's say like that. Thank you. I think that uh, I think that's great to know. I think it's, that's aligned with what we were just saying. Uh, there's a lot of competence on that and you guys, uh, have to get together to discuss that. And Enrique uh, from the DCP just shared here some pipelines already implemented by the HCA. I think that uh, what you just said about well, this is, is great. It's not about redoing what's already there. So um, I think that so, it would be great uh, if you got together to check it out. Let me just tell you something here. Um, one of uh, our uh, participants su is suggesting that everybody writes down full names and emails at the chat so we can uh, talk together after this. Christine, you wanna uh, say something? I could see that Enrique had, had a, an additional comment. Uh, yes, yeah, go I ahead, <laughs> um, So uh, I don't know if any of you have joined the the HCA Slack, but it's open. And like adding to what Jay said, uh, in the HCA Slack, there is a, a data pipeline team uh, channel in which you can chat with Kylie, which is um, kind of the manager that, and with many other people that are working on it. So if you have any questions, just drop in there. People is really nice. So feel free to ask any question in there and they will be able to answer better than me. <laughs> that's great, I, I think that's great. I think we all have to keep in mind that the HCA during the past years, they have already come a long way on a lot of aspects that we are discussing here, even on uh, uh, biology protocols, uh, data analysis protocols, even ethics. Uh, they have a lot of working groups uh, dedicated to all these aspects. So 
we really have to dig into it, you know, and try to reach out and to collaborate directly with them so we don't have to start from zero. So the idea is since we're starting, let's start like take advantage of all that. What we want is to contribute with the HCA. So um, also, so I think it's, it's important that we keep that in mind. Uh, it's a very good point, Enrique. Uh, does anybody want to share any views on what they think uh, HCA Latin America should look like? Yes. Is this all too new for us to imagine what um, a Latin American Human Cell Atlas would look like as a group? Well, I think um, it would be important to highlight if there are any differences in, even if it's some of the same diseases or, or tissues that we study, uh, you know, as, as the main Human Cell Atlas, I think this diversity should be one of the first points, like, is there, I don't know the answer, I don't know enough about the literature in this topic, but is there any difference in gene regulation, you know, that is more prevalent in certain ethnicities that can be uh, related to certain diseases that are more prevalent in certain places? For example, here in Mexico, of course, we're the most obese country in the world, and that's not only related to diet, of course, a lot of that has to do with diet, but we also have one of the highest prevalences of certain polymorphisms uh, that are, you know, just associated with, uh, with obesity. So, for example, is there a difference in genetics, you know, it, at the level of gene regulation? Can you see uh, different uh, proportions of cells doing certain things than others in certain organs? I, I don't know how that would look like. And of course, focusing, I would think, in, in, in diseases that are important for these countries that, you know, maybe... Uh, also important in other places but sometimes have been just overlooked because they're not that common in other places so i i would think that's the best at least in my point of view um, view of how this could look like as a latin american initiative do we think that if we set a goal to have in one year um some ideas of for example, important cohorts of diseases which are most prevalent in our countries or um, access to samples that could uh, address uh, genetic diversity, just like Wilson is constructing here. We are also going to have one on rare diseases. So Albert Einstein Hospital is uh, sequencing uh, thousands of uh, genomes also, and we have over a thousand also uh, genomes that have just recently been published from Brazil. So I believe the other Latin American countries may have that. Do you think that in one, one year we can come up with that? Do you think this is a realistic goal that we can get together to organize this framework for HCA Latin America? Is Why this not? Realistic? It's a great goal. Yeah, that we that would be a more or less short term, well prevalent diseases with cohorts, genomic data for genomic diversity. I'm not sure about the genomic data, at least here though. I mean, we for sure can get probably together cohorts, you know, collaborating with hospitals that have uh, access to these patients of you know from diseases with importance here. But I'm not sure in a year we can generate at least no, I'm not, aware. yeah i'm not sure about generating but having a, a complete picture of what is available so each oh. yeah so like for us to design what we really can do first we have to have access to uh groups to have it and have a clear picture of what we could do so have this uh framework and we can create a working group that would be in touch to collect this kind of information. And then from there, well, meanwhile, of course, we're gonna have all these uh, projects that we are going to try to get uh, funding for, but maybe have this framework in a, a year um, timeline. Mauro yes. wants to say something? Yes, uh, Patty, um, just, just a thought to share in the group. Um, according to the, the, 
the data the generated by by the consortium how uh, how is the, is there a framework that we could understand and look at about how to share this data for example for data analysis and maybe uh, to organize working groups dedica dedicated to understand and to and for example to bring their methods to to assess this this data sets this e very interesting and very rich data sets i'm not sure i understand what you're talking about um, are you talking about data sets that already exist i i, the I hca I, ones I, I presume that the um, uh the atlas has uh generated single cell data that still enrique, enrique has shared here in the chat how to have access to pipelines and also yesterday in the talk he yep. shared uh how we can have access to human cell atlas data that is already available um i think you can reach out to enrique to understand more how this works but yes uh, okay. Most certainly, yes, they are already available, and that would be one of the of the task forces. Oh, and he is just sharing here again in the in the group of people who work with computational biology and data analysis, getting together to understand how these resources are um, accessible. I, I I actually ask this because uh, this is one way to organize groups in terms of uh, non-funding requirements. Um, I have some experience with the CG analysis working groups. Yeah. Uh, because they also produce a mm -hmm. lot of data that uh, need inputs from different expertise. And, and the way they organize groups is very interesting in the sense that they have clear targets, clear goals, and get together people that can contribute with the, their expertise. So I, I, I think I see that the Atlas has a very unique and rich data sets that can be shared by the community. And uh, this- uh, uh, I think that, uh, Mauro, yes, that is a very uh, good idea as one of the working groups. Uh, um, and uh, there are quite a few of you guys already working with this data sets. Wilson, Helder is also doing this. I think Vinicius too. So I think, Mauro, it would be great if you we, as one of our goals, um, data analysis is already happening when we are ready to generate biological data. So I think it's really important what you're saying because this requires minimum funding at many times and can be already uh, done. Can we also say then that we have a relatively short term goal of this first year that uh, data analysis groups can be organized into that. What do you think, Mauro and Wilson, Vinicius and Hernandez uh, from Mexico? Enrique Hernandez from Mexico. I, I, I guess it, it's a, a doable uh, goal. Mm -hmm. At least setting, yeah, uh, setting yourselves as a working and group. Setting and the groups, it, it's, it's uh, yes, most likely a, a doable. Mm -hmm. And with, with all the previous experience and all the previous guidelines that we already have, we, we may even have not, not starting at zero, but having like wrapping up uh, everything already established and trying to adapt it to, to the, way we, the way we work in Latin America. That's great. Guys, we unfortunately have to... Um, finish the discussion here because we have to uh, in 20 minutes get together in the other room remember the other room where we were before the webinar room uh, to uh, communicate to the others some of the points that we were discussing here so it was great talking to everyone here we will get back to everyone you know like we will have this um, yesterday this was mentioned we're going to mention it today again that we're gonna try to have follow-up meetings more informal in the next month so that people can come back and reconnect 
so that we don't lose this, uh, we don't miss the opportunity of really have this going now. So I think there's going to be one or two meetings uh, opportunities per, per day the next month. So this is going to be shared with you. And in those meetings, we uh, assume that we were going to really be able to uh, put together people who are really interested in have this going for the next year. And then we're going to have smaller working groups to try to make this, uh, this happen. But we will be sharing this all with you guys later. So thank you very much. If you want to go grab a cup of coffee or something, I have now to talk to Christina and uh, Daniela, right? So we can put together some notes. Yes. Thank you, guys. This was really thank great. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Lovely Great to meet you all. Talk to everyone. Thank, Thank you, you guys. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye bye. Patricia, what a fantastic job you did chairing that. Well done. <laughs> It was really great. It's such a great such crowd. Good. It's such a great crowd, right? They're all great. Such great discussions. And you pulled out the theme so beautifully. That so, was really great. Thank you so much, everybody, for being here. It was a great crowd. That's why, right? They're all so <laughs> good. A bit quiet at the beginning, but... <laughs> more, more, right? Not it's also very early. At some place, uh, not... Well, I shouldn't say for me, but I do work at nights usually. So for me, it's like, this is why I look like this. It's just like, I woke up and so it's at the beginning, true. it was a bit hard, <laughs> just, but it's we're true. fine now. <laughs> it's true, I guess. Uh, and also not like some of the people here that were here, I know them, they're very chatty, but it's hard when you have like 30 people, right? To be able to like discuss, right? <laughs> no, so. you look right. Points here. Yeah, and yeah, so uh, amazing actually how thematic it was. So, Danielle, what were your main themes? So, I don't know well, how we can. Uh, I don't know how we can do this. Um, this feedback. So, should we write a, a thing in a word document and read it? That we could <laughs> share. Yeah. Did you, um, did, did, I wrote it in a paper here. Did anybody already write it in a? Yeah, mine I, is I, the same. <laughs> yeah, I write, I write in paper. <laughs> I wrote in the computer, but if. Ah, so if you wrote in a computer, maybe you can if, read it to us and then we can maybe add. What do you think, Christine? I, I, well, I really loved the way you framed the forward looking piece. You know, this is our goal within a year. These are what the working groups can probably achieve. Why not let, let's frame the discussion around that? Um, okay. Because then we can talk about the, the challenges and opportunities about use, you know, the, the opportunities with the biobanks and the challenges really understanding how to set the methods mm -hmm. um, and how to generate the data in the various sites. Um, the um, opportunities where you've got very, very cohesive interest in biology, um, but, you know, the challenge of being so geographically dis uh, dispersed mm -hmm. and, re you know, reasonably isolated pockets of people too. Mm -hmm. um, and then the opportunity of having so many people interested in the bioinformatics, mm -hmm. the challenge of really understanding data interoperability and the importance of connecting back and to also HCA. to get them to talk together and uh, yeah. define how yeah. to work because they tend to be very within their walls when they yeah, have them. yeah. I can tell <laughs> yeah they all are already like developing as something else right and to get them mm -hmm. down to earth to analyze data that needs to be analyzed mm. is uh, mm -hmm. that's a challenge but, but let's not but point it out <laughs> no, <laughs> but you know, by, by setting your one-year goal in a, in a year, we will have reviewed how best to, to interact with the biobanks mm -hmm. and set the themes that we're going to really focus on and bring the funders together and have some further workshops to, to talk about how we network. That's mm -hmm. a, brilliant, um, a brilliant goal. And through that time, th these data analysis people have been tasked with setting up some training workshops 
-hmm. and working out how to how to operate with the data portal so that we can exchange data mm -hmm. between teams. Um, do you think we have to have a PowerPoint for that or can we just say it? I reckon I'm writing, you've got it. I'm writing, I'm trying to organize because I wrote okay. this. Oh, that's great. Uh, we love that. I'm trying yeah. to organize it in point. So we have, so we let's, have points. Let's in, say that, yeah, we have a one year goal of uh -huh. um, understanding how much information we have in our biobanks, cohorts, and the aim would be to work with genetic diversity uh, or specific diseases. So we would have this time frame to um, understand that. We would also like to set up meetings with the funders, and that could be international ones like the CZI, mm -hmm. uh, Maybe the NIH, I don't know how accessful they are, but the gates. Why are they, they can say no. Why yeah. invite them? It's and and welcome. Welcome yeah. is amazing. The welcome. <laughs> yeah. Welcome the welcome gates. And in Brazil, the FAPIs, they're called the FAPs, uh, for a discussion on what we have and how they would like us to frame our uh, project proposals that would be competitive how, and interesting for the HCA. How do you spell, sorry, the, these Brazilian... Uh, ah, it's F-A-P. It's uh, Fundação de Amparo Pesquisa, and they have one in each uh, state of the federation. Okay. So I think that's a national one in Brazil that can fund uh, uh, collaborations. And many times they have uh, uh, international collaborations that they fund. So meetings with the funders. And then we would have working groups with the bioinformatics people. So they can already start training uh, students and organizing themselves on how to uh, work with us. <laughs> yeah, not with themselves. And, <laughs> and in interoperability of the data with the HCA data portal. Yes, that's very good too. If, if they can't work it back with that, then it's going to be very difficult for you. The the last how, how, training uh, yes, piece, how, how they can operate with the with the HCA yeah, portal yeah. and all the information that is available. And the last training piece that you drew together really nicely was. Um, all of these side um, groups, fellowships, uh, exchange opportunities to bring, um, uh, to help other um, incidental training that might sit outside the HCA, but uh, allows for uh, a lot of networking of people. Yes. Um, uh, so we so would have I can't a remember all of those group. different fellowships. Yeah, yeah, we want to set up a group of people who would yeah. take care of that uh, exchanging. Yeah. I'm just going to remove Joanna. Okay, okay. I don't know, I think that's a, what is that? I mean, maybe she's part of it. Do we have what we need? Are you putting that in a PowerPoint, Daniela, for us? With pictures? Okay, I'm, I'm <laughs> writing. I'm, well, I'm writing a, a Word document organizing the thing, but we can, oh, I mean, when it's actually organized, it's easy to put in slides. Oh, okay, <laughs> so that's great. To that's put good. it in, in different, because I wrote a lot of stuff here and it's from different places, so I'm trying to just put it. So I'm, I'm organizing it first, the goals. So, uh, Yes, there's a one year gold goal, uh, which is, as we were discussing, understanding what's available in different countries and uh, having a complete uh, picture of what we can work with and what we need. Um, and then there's kind of side goals, I would say. I mean, uh, you know, like all the projects that we can pursue now in a way. So, um, I don't know how to write that like um, yeah you can you can write like immediate goal 
we uh -huh. have a lot of common interests within the group so you put goals immediate goal <laughs> uh -huh. we and have a lot a of goal. common interests right so we could get together in small hubs to uh mm -hmm. co um uh, a specific project a specific yes a specific projects right so there is that then in uh that's immediate <laughs> then yes. in one year we want where do we want to be in one year so in one year so we're going to be working together this one year to understand the biobanks resources specific diseases so that by in one year from now we will really have a clear picture of how we can uh, collaborate as hca latin america jay was suggesting an immediate goal to you should be just to choose some simple tissues and mm -hmm. benchmark between the sites, how each laboratory, you, basically being confident in, that each other is generating equivalent data with equivalent can, cells. Can this go uh, think, together with the bioinformatics working group that would be getting together to? I think this would be the data generators, so the people who have the machines. Yeah. Ah, okay. Oh, yes. Okay, that could be one of the yeah. immediate goals, right? People who yeah. have the machine. Uh, yeah, so specific projects and something like that. Choose a uh, kind of sample that would be more uh, genetic, just like PBMCs, right? And start working He was suggesting that. PBMCs, and mm -hmm. what they did in Japan, and what we did in Australia um, was uh, have some blood that was taken from one set of donors mm -hmm. shipped between the different sites. Yes. And then everyone did the library preparation at those sites and we just came back and compared data and said, so if we get data from Mexico and we get data from Brazil, are they the, is it the same? Um, it's a very interesting benchmarking um, activity, but it and it does take a lot of trust. <laughs> but it lets you know whether or not the methods you've got are robust. Okay. Yes, I think that's okay. Good. Good. So those would be two immediate things: setting up small projects and getting people who have the machines to work with common samples. Just to, to work with each other. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. to be able to work uh, with uh, with each other and with the protocols right mm. immediate also would be the uh, working group for data analysis that we were just mentioning mm -hmm. so workshops um, learning how to work with uh, HCA data uh, with the protocol establishing uh, looking at the protocols that are already available. Yeah, uh, look, <clears throat> the protocols you need are so tissue specific that you know, I would, my strong advice to you is you are the experts in the tissues that you're working with. Mm -hmm. You're going to be able to work out the best way of, may, of isolating that tissue. You can start with the HCA protocol, but a lot of the tissues you're interested in, like melanoma, are not in the atlas. Yes, true. Um, I remember Orit mentioned some of that too, right? That yeah. there are some specifics and uh, you try the protocols, maybe that's not really going to work as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The blood, and so the only reason you would use something like PBMCs is so that you've got a benchmark to compare different of facilities course, yeah. with. Mm -hmm. because you're not going to use those protocols on a more complex tissue. Of course, yeah. You'd be more mm. like to learn how to work together, get used to generating the yeah. data, sharing the data, analyzing the data. How, this is a reasonably cheap sample to get. How easy is it to ship between sites? Is it worth shipping or do mm. we lose the sample? Yeah. Okay. And then also within this year, Daniela would be the meetings with the funders. Um, to Immediate goal. Yeah. Mm. It okay. may take you a year to get them at the table, but. Yes, yes. Mm. Within a year, we want to do that. Immediate goal is the initial uh, 
specific projects mm -hmm. and benchmarking Sorry. protocols and bioinformatics within one year biodiversity biobanks diseases and the meeting with the funders yeah okay and um, and then there was the list of get, having a working group who was going to get a list of the training mm -hmm. opportunities the small grant training opportunities mm -hmm. um, which may be particularly facilitating laboratory exchange so you can get trainees um, to come back with with um, the EBI methods or the Regan methods. Okay, coming, coming. So they, want it, they want us to be back in five minutes. Okay, okay, coming, coming. <laughs> I'm almost done. <laughs> uh, okay. I think uh, you so have I to have... send this to me by email. Let me see. Yes. I'm going to write my email here. <laughs> it's just that I'm trying to put um, so very quickly okay uh, there's a oh yeah the discounts and all these things um, well you can okay. save the chat do you want to save uh, it? yeah I think um, right so I have here yeah so I have here, uh, sh I can send it to you. I didn't, okay, yeah, all right. So let me send you both. Oh, I can send it in the chat as well, right? No, in the chat, I don't no? know how to pick it up from here, but maybe, yeah, I don't know. Do I download it? I think, I think you can, so I can send it both. Uh, yeah, just send it to my email, I'll get it there. Okay, so. I have it here, so email. Right. It was great help, Daniela. <laughs> uh, well, I, 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 I hear this. So is, is it the Einstein.br? No, this send it to this. Uh, I just put it here in the chat. Ah, Morrigan PS? Yeah, because the okay. Gmail is faster. The lab one takes a while to. Christine, do you want me to send them to you as well? Yeah. That would be great. Thank you so much. I'll, I'll send you my email as well. It's... I did not include here the participants um, uh, summaries, but I have them as well. So um, I can, do I, I, I can, I can put them, but they would be a raw. I did not pull, uh, you know, I did not um, uh, pull, um, how to say, uh, uh, clean those ones, but I can add them at the end. I'm, I'm not sure. Um, okay. Yeah. So sending now. Where is your email? Ah, oh, yeah. Okay. Right. So it's gone. You should get them now i hope <laughs> so basically while they arrive i'll open it again um so i wrote down basically goals immediate goal for mission of small hubs to pursue specific projects immediate goal choose some simple tissues bbmcs from the same donors for example to benchmark techniques and results against the main hca uh, immediate goal create working group for bioinformatics to learn to work with hca data and learning protocols Another immediate goal is meeting with funders and see what they're interested in to help them fulfill their, their funding agenda. And I wrote, welcome CSTZI Brazilian FAP. And then mm -hmm. one year goal, understanding what's available in the different countries, biobanks, resources, specific diseases, and how a clear picture of how we can collaborate as HCA Latin America. Then strength, lots of common interests, potential for collaboration, several groups in different countries with data I have wrote data, significant data analysis experience. Data analysis experience. That's great. Uh, several groups with access to biobanks from you genetically to my yes. Girls, and I have to go because they are. I have. We have to be in another room. Uh, so, okay. Well, okay. And if I don't we'll leave the room, then. I cannot go in the other room. But we can communicate afterwards in the meeting. 
It was okay, great. You. Thank, Thank you. you so much, Daniela. Thank you so much. Thank you, see you there. It was a pleasure. So we go back to the meeting, right? right? All of us. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Bye. Awesome.